The next part of this experiment, after we've located the embryo inside the egg, is to attach it firmly to a petri dish so that we can move it to a microscope. I've got some melted wax in here, and I'm going to pour a, about a quarter size, in other words, a 25 cent piece, of wax, and as that wax is cooling, I've got my finger right where the embryo is, and I'm going to try to put that straight up and down. So the embryo is now sitting at the top, and my wax is cooling, allowing me to carry this to our microscope. Okay, now we've got a microscope and we've got, it, uh, got the egg. Wax has dried or cooled, so the egg is fixed in place. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a window. So this is called windowing the egg. This allows us to see through this hard, opaque shell and look into the embryo. So we're gonna remove the calcified shell so that we can see what's inside the egg. This allows us to keep the embryo alive while we do the experiment. In case we as developmental biologists wanted to study the egg, we could then put it back in the incubator and watch it for the next 21 days to see what happened. However, today what we're gonna do is just learn how to open it and see what it looks like to look into an opened up living chick egg. So I have a no number of different tools I'll be using. Um, we've got these uh, little, um, not sure I had blanked on the name of these, a prodder, a poker which can poke through the egg for us. And that can let some of the air out of the egg so that the embryo will sink down a little so I don't cut into the embryo as I cut the shell. We can also use razor blades to saw open the top and scalpels for the same purpose. We can then use fine forceps to pull back pieces of shell until we expose the size of hole that we would like. So I'm gonna start here by sawing Notice I'm not pressing down hard because I don't want to crack the egg. I'm sawing with a very sharp razor blade. I'm actually making a tiny bit of little sawdust here. It's not wooden sawdust, but calcium of the egg. And I want to try to get the entire area over top of the chick embryo open so that I can see inside. If you want to zoom in, you can see the nice little square I've cut here. This will be our window. I'm about two-thirds of the way through the shell at this point. To make sure that the embryo isn't in the way, I want to poke a hole in this end. Better get a really sharp one. Here's a nice sharp one. There we go. Got a little crack there. I'm going to work my way in. Okay. And now what I've done is by making this little air hole at the very end, the embryo and the yolk that's inside can sink down and fill up the space that used to be a pocket of air at this end. I didn't point it out while we were candling, but there was a dark area at um, both ends. And so now I've got an air pocket that is out of the way and our embryo can fall down and fill that space. Perfect. I'm using the forceps right now at this air hole to remove the membrane of the egg. If you've ever cracked, can you see that? Mm -hmm. There's a piece of membrane that I just, if you ever cracked an egg, and the shell cracked, but the egg didn't come out, right? You were wanting to make scrambled eggs, but 
it didn't come out, that's because it has a tight membrane around underneath the egg, underneath the shell. So I'm going to want to cut through the, both the calcium shell and the fibrous membrane that's on the inside. And this can take about five to ten minutes because you don't want to push down too hard or you may crack the egg. Cracking the egg would allow for uh, more germs to get in and for the fluid that is there to start leaking out, making it so that the embryo might not survive if we put it back in the, in in the incubator. Okay. really start to feel breaking through the shell on some of these parts. But I don't want to push too hard or the scalpel will go down in and cause a crack. So I just want to be able to get the scalpel through the shell without actually cracking. Okay, I have my first full breakthrough right here. This is going to be the opening of my window. Can you see how now the forceps can go inside and I can pull off pieces of shell? That's all shell. And here's that membrane that I was talking about. That membrane on the inside. We can start to see down in there and wonder what is inside of our chick egg. So in order to get bigger pieces off at once, I'm going to cut a little bit more here, a little bit deeper. And I got a pretty, pretty big piece of shell there that time. Nice. Come over to the side of my... I haven't gone very deep on that side. That was the side furthest from you. I haven't really worked on that side very much. So let me... Woo! Got a big piece there. Now, when I said I don't want to crack the shell, what I meant is I don't want to crack to run down the side of the egg because then all the fluid will leak out. But cracking off pieces of the shell like this is a quick way to get our window open. And there's a living embryo with a beating heart. I try to get as much of the membrane out of the way as possible. Notice that my embryo has started to leak down here at the end, so I'm losing a little bit more f uh, fluid than I would like. I only wanted to pop the air sac. Looks like either I went too deep or I was too vigorous in my sawing of the egg. So this one I likely, unfortunately, would not survive were I to put it back into the embryo. I mean, sorry, into the incubator. Okay, I just want to remove a little bit more of the membrane and then I'll have you come look straight down in on it. Hmm. Let me grab some fatter forceps and I'm just gonna grab and pull. There we go. There we go. Okay, come and look straight down in, and we'll see the embryo itself. Do you see the little red spider? This is the head. The head has turned a little bit to your right. The legs are down there, and there are blood vessels coming off on each side. Let's put this under the microscope and see if you can see it. This is called a dissecting microscope. It is designed so that you can put very large specimens on the microscope and still focus on them. I'd love you to see this beating heart. 
So this is the embryo, just what it looks like after I have enlarged the window so that we can see down and see the blood vessels going off to the top and to the bottom. There's a letter P laying down with the brain is going towards the bottom. On the right side, the beating heart is the red pulsing right in the center, and then the body of the embryo bends around that and goes directly to the left. It's just like a little inverse question mark. So we're going to try to show you this under a higher magnification through the uh, through the microscope, but uh, again, the camera may not be able to focus as well through the microscope. Beating heart is visible. You can even see the different compartments of the heart. With At the bottom of this picture would be where the brain is. The, t the right of this picture would also be brain wrapping around the internal organs and then off to the left, that purple line that bends like a question mark to the left would be the body of the embryo. You can see the two blood vessels going off, one to the top and one to the bottom. Those feed the embryo from the yolk.